hustling, every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling, every day Welcome to Construction Interchange. My name is Opili Legani Mpemba. Construction Interchange Man is my new segment where we basically just dissect the market with a different person from a different um, sphere of the industry every um, every episode. So today we have Undando Kuzwayo, who's the Qualifications Liaison Manager for the Chartered Institute of Building. This guy has managed NGO programs. This guy is doing like a strategic education model for the CIOB. So in terms of just the outlook, education, the way that just where the industry is, and what he's kind of doing to nurture um, our industry and the people that are going into it. I'm really excited that he's actually my first guest and to kind of give us an overview of uh, of one our episodes to come but also just an overview of the industry and how we can just tackle it in um into our daily um professions hi dando welcome to construction interchange i'm so glad to have you um thank you for coming on um yeah thank you so much pilile for the invite it's it's really a, an honor um to be part of the first episode of the construction interchange i won't lie i'm, I'm trying to stay calm and collected but deep down i'm very excited um to just be part of the show and i really think it's a platform um where you can make a real difference in in the built environment so it's it's an honor to be part of um your show and what an amazing introduction i can actually get used to this so yeah thank you and i look forward to our um, to our chat um and yeah so i'm sure you've got a few questions and please go for it so in terms of just my first question to you it's just your overview of, of the industry i know that obviously you've you are you're working within strategic management and education yeah. with um chartered institute of building what is your overview of the industry right now um i'll just start, start off from a global perspective um currently there is an increase you know in adoption of automation modular construction techniques and other new technologies you know are continuing to shape the future of the construction industry um, secondly recovery may be underway um, but the effects of um, COVID-19 on the construction industry will continue to be felt uh, you know throughout the year and really for for some time um, and with climate change and growing awareness around climate change, um, you know, our demand for green buildings may accelerate, especially in SA. Um, we currently do have, um, you know, a lot of green buildings um, or climate friendly buildings like the Deloitte building in Cape Town. Um, so there's a greater adoption of sustainable building methods. Um, and this is now really a global trend that's bound to sort of continue um yeah that's really my outlook on the built environment yo i'm so, i'm so glad that you um you touched on sustainability because sustainability growth um and just technological advances in terms of just our industry because that's the one place that we are lacking in but in terms of just the other areas as you mentioned um which i'm glad that you mentioned is that there's so much potential for growth because the demand is growing for for different types and different methods in terms of just different building methods which means that there is space for the the innovative um your innovative uh build um entrepreneurs your your digital construction people so um i'm, I'm really glad that you, you you touched on that and to understand that in as much as we are not growing as fast as we'd want but there's so much potential for us to get there but also with that does not mean that we need to kind of succumb to our complacency because that's what we've done in terms of just digital and technological advancement we pretty in the back burner as just in construction and the built environment so i'm so glad that you actually touched you you actually touched on that and just in the way like the way that you do things dando uh with the ciob and just how you move and just how you choose to tackle your role how how do you do it like in terms of just the, your thought process within just how you move in this industry because this industry is very challenging you know so how is it that you 
you kind of find your place um you kind of find your strategy and and you are kind of moving and to to be at a place and at a pace where you are at um for starters really um and this is really my perspective uh to lead in this competitive world one must accept that change is inevitable that's really quite key um and when you take responsibility for your state despite your challenge you show up to face the situation with a smile <laughs> um, and you leverage your strength to enjoy the new experience um, and how do i do things differently um, i've learned the importance of utilizing the five p's and not only in my profession but also in my personal life so one which has been the hardest is learning to be patient um, it's taking me a lot of time a lot of patience with myself as well but i've learned to be patient i've learned to wait things out um, and i've learned to trust the process um, number two i've learned to be very persistent by means of resisting any desire to give up so things may not be going my way um, I have to be patient um, and I also have to resist the desire to give up and thirdly I practice practicality um, it may seem sophisticated but it's really just all about being present you know I stay present I, I'm rooted in the here and now and fourthly positivity positive vibes man it, it's really a plus um, lastly it's have purpose you know anything that pushes me or propels me forward is worth the change you know no matter how difficult or no matter how overwhelming it is um, but as long as it propels me forward um, it's something I hold on to and it really um, aligns my purpose as well yeah Yo, yo, I'm so glad. I think as a marketer, um, when you mentioned the four Ps, I think my brain just goes to product, place, price, and promotion. So, wow, I think those, those, those ones are pretty powerful because it's not just within our industry or within a certain market, but, you know, like there were so many times where I felt like um, I didn't know what my purpose was. And I, I always knew, there were so many times where I knew that I knew that what my purpose was. It was just a matter of the way that I looked at construction and the way that I wanted to enter the market. No one else really understood what I was doing. So I had to have the patience to kind of just outride those bad times and not and not kind of and 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 channel positive vibes in order for me to kind of just, you know, know what I'm doing and kind of just, you know what, if you don't believe in it, this so I'm gonna move. So I'm so glad that um you 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 touched on that because it just it's it's just not just about us as in construction but just in every area of your lives you have to there has to be a point where you practice that patience you practice you practice that positivity you in as much as i know that you've spoken about the four p's and your patience and everything else there are times where you you are not really in your zen and um you know it's it's not working out the way that you want you'd want it to work what are the lessons that you've taken out of just the built industry and just being um growing to a point where you have grown to and and being able to kind of just you know shut out the noise and and being able to to work yourself in this industry because i will stress again this is not an easy industry to be working for so and to be working towards and of course especially because you're not just the straight and narrow engineer or contractor or qu quantity surveyor or architect you know you've got a bachelor's degree and you've kind of entered this um this this um this industry from a social space um what are the type of lessons that you've kind of learned and you've kind of taken away with the way that um you've you you with the way that you've chosen to kind of enter this industry uh, <laughs> um you know there's quite a lot um there's a lot i think um i'm happy to share three uh one uh it's networking uh make connecting with others a priority you know and I always say this, regardless if you're a student, you're an academic, you're an industry professional, you know, your network is your net worth. 
Um, so prioritize connecting with others. You know, that, although there's much you can sort of like do um, or create when you work alone, but greater success comes when you create and work with a network of friends, uh, colleagues, or even family members. Um, so teamwork um, really also counts as well. A focus on developing your inner strength or just using your strength uh, to an advantage or to accelerate in your career. Find what you enjoy um, doing the most and work to develop your strength in that area. Uh, you know, keep in mind that no one is an overnight expert and, you know, it takes a lot of time um, and a lot of hard work to get to where you want to be. So just focus on developing your strength, uh, but not leaving behind your weaknesses. Um, always make time to also develop your weaknesses because you will never know your weaknesses might turn into your strength. Um, lastly, I'll keep it very short, is be very intentional. Um, either you're setting up a meeting with a new client or a new stakeholder, that meeting must be intentional and, we, and it must be very strategic as well. Um, this is something I had to learn, uh, you know, not just to go and meet any person, you know, it has to be of mutual benefit and that's very strategic. Um, so be very strategic, intentional and specific with your goals as well. Um, so those are some of the lessons I, 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 I'm happy to share um, with you all. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. So what I got from there is basically you need to be practical. Um, you need to be practical, especially in this industry. Um, this is an industry of full of people that are very technical. And even the way that you choose to, to kind of enter your relationships. I remember my mentor goth james um always used to say that um when you meet people be very intentional um in the way that you choose to communicate with them um don't come from a point of oh no this is you know it's only business there is a person behind and use that to harness and create those relationships around people and care about the people that you meet in as much as we are going into into a business meeting and you are entrusting someone with a certain part of yourself so if you're going to be obviously not every meeting is going to turn into that collaboration that we all want or um a success but the ones that do and when you decide that you are going into those relationships i agree with you dando it's 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 you have to be very strategic about it but also you need to you need to treat people with respect but also understand that they're also human beings as well because this industry we kind of use we kind of lose our human factor you know we kind of you lose our human factor where it's just you know what can you do for me um how is it that i'm going to help you let's kind of get to the bottom line and let's get uh, let's get out of each other's hair and that doesn't that type of thinking does not really um really get those long lasting um, relationships and lastly i'm so glad that you touched on this collaboration i think collaboration is literally the foundation of growth in terms of just in any industry but i think the one thing that i'd want us to stress with with just within just this episode and um with what i'm start with what i'm starting here is to stress how important collaboration is and how collaboration just just doesn't benefit the people that are actually collaborating. You know, there are so many people that are going to take those gems that you've shared with us in Dandunam Klanje. And 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 take them in terms of just how they're going to look on look into tomorrow and how they are going to to kind of start their journey within this industry or how they want to pivot and and start a different journey within this industry. You know, um, th this episode has more than anything and what you've said has taught me that um, the industry is open. One, um, there are so many avenues that you can use to enter. So don't be restricted by your qualification. Um, your qualification doesn't really mean that you are going to do that thing um also explore 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 man like we are literally um a playing ground just for creative you know um we are new we are fresh and we don't know any better 
you know so um everything that we're going to get here is is an improvement and we are growing i hope that you've enjoyed um a little bit of our chats with undando um and that you have um enjoyed what undando has kind of just laid for us in terms of just growth and how we choose to kind of enter our industry and how we choose to navigate it um our next episode i'll be coming on with an engineer a really cool engineer um he's he's he does he does things differently man in this industry so um i look forward to my next episode i look forward to seeing you again and thank you for coming on to construction interchange um yeah thank you so much uh Pilile for having me um this was a really great chat and i really wish you more successful um construction interchange episodes um yeah thank you so much and um all the best for your upcoming episodes who you suckers think you're tripping with yes i'm the boss